This is a Real Ghost Stories Online Extra. It's great to be calling in. New listener. I just recently discovered your show. My story, um, this happened, oh, I don't know. It might have been seven years ago or so. It was uh, myself. I had moved once I had met my ex-wife uh, and moved in with her to her, her family's home that was passed down to her and they had since moved our state. And uh, uh, upon living there, it was the the first time, as far as I can remember, that I've ever experienced sleep paralysis. And I guess that's what I've come to been told that it was. And uh, it happened uh, a few times there and it's never happened prior and it's never happened since. Now, let me get into, into why I think this is. We were together, uh, you know, like I said, we were, my ex-wife, we were, we were married, so everything was going good. Um, but I always felt kind of, kind of eerie there, like there was something watching. And she had, this was a, a strong Italian family with roots in the community that went back for generations and generations. And there was pictures on the wall of, of the old family, the you know, the monsters that protected the neighborhood, just stern looking guys, brimmed hats and you know, it always seemed like they were just watching you and it wasn't just that. It wasn't you know, I never like all the pictures looking at me kind of guy, but just an eerie, heavy feeling in some of the rooms, the presence, you know. It was always stronger when when things were uh you know, there was tension in the home. And uh but long story short, yeah, it, toward the end, you know, like I said, we're obviously not married now, so we were we were separating. It was a mutual thing, you know. There was really no no anger or anything, but there was sadness, of course. And we're separating. I'm I'm staying in the guest bedroom. She's in the master. I'm working on finding an apartment and you know divvying up our stuff and and so on. And uh, in this guest bedroom. Now, if it wasn't creepy enough, in the back of the closet, there's this tiny little crawl space that leads to these weird little steps going up into just the attic. It's, it's pretty much just the peak of the home, which is a two-story home in the basement, two floors, and then that little peaked area. Uh, rafters, insulation, it's kind of kind of sketchy, walking across, you kind of kind of crawl and watch what you're doing. Just old family stuff up there. And, you know, as we went up there once and, and, and just looked around, and, and that was that was eerie enough. Just knowing that was in there was one thing. But hung on the walls was a few pictures, and it was uh, grandparents and great-grandparents. And, and like I said, they were just very powerful-looking, uh, stern figures. And uh, sleeping in that room was the first time. No, that was the second time. I apologize that I had experienced a sleep paralysis. The first time was just before the breakup, um, and that was when, you know, of course, we were both in the master bedroom, and uh, it had occurred, and uh, eventually it, whatever happened, it broke loose. And uh, I'll jump back here to the second time, and the evening after the split up in the guest room, and uh, when I explain it, it's pretty much the same thing as I felt previously. Just laying there, the normal, heavy, eerie feeling, you know, not because of the room it had bright, vibrant colors, it was nice, it was a nice house just the pictures that always thought they were watching you and you, you just felt like a presence and uh, just at times it was hard to breathe, like I, that, was, that was the time I'm laying in bed one day, I don't remember what I was doing I was, I was reading something and uh, you just feel it you know, I try to brush it off, like okay I get this, turn the lights off, go to bed and upon waking, which I don't remember, I, I believe it was morning, it was light, it was getting light, and I, just getting light, and I, I couldn't, couldn't move, like my eyes were open, I was talking to myself in my head like I knew, like, hey, you're awake, what, what the hell are you doing, why aren't you getting up, and I'm, I can kind of move my head in my eyes, and I'm looking over, and I can just see the picture, and I feel like it's looking at me, you know, it's telling me, like, it's more than telling me anything, I didn't hear anything, but it felt as if, you know, get the hell out of here kind of thing and uh that being the second time and after that I broke loose I had never slept in that room again I stayed down on the couch for the remaining 
couple of weeks to a month until I established, you know, a residency elsewhere. And, uh, and, that, and that was pretty much it. If you want access to more Real Ghost Stories, become a premium subscriber to Real Ghost Stories online. Sign up now through Apple Podcasts and try it for three days free. Not on Apple? Go to patreon.com slash realghoststories or ghostpodcast.com.